So it says a uh, novelty clock has a uh, mass. Um, so let me give it a label. Some mass object bouncing on a spring with, ah, here's the spring constant, 1.5 uh, Newton per meter. Um, um, so, all right. Uh, what is the maximum velocity of the object? If the object bounces 3.0 centimeter above and below its uh, equilibrium position. So, oh, uh, let me do this question actually two ways. Let me do it one the way I was saying just now using energy. And I can actually do it the second way using the mathematical description of oscillation. So let me do it the first way first. Now, what I hope you will realize is that the question gave you a fair amount of information already. It's giving you spring constant, which means um, you have most of what you need to ca calculate the potential energy um, at any given time of this uh, particular spring. The pot spring potential energy is given by one half times k times the uh, displacement from equilibrium squared. So when it says the object object bounces 3.0 centimeter above and below its equilibrium position, what it's given you is it has given you the maximum potential energy. So the uh, in this question, the maximum potential energy is given by one half that spring constant K times, uh, let me give this a label of A times A squared. That, that's the maximum potential energy. Now, um, when you have an oscillatory motion, when you have a spring and a mass, and this mass is oscillating up and down on this spring, you have a sense that um, that the total mechanical energy is conserved. And the, the way we are describing right now, this equilibrium position here is where the potential energy is at zero. That's our reference for potential energy. When this is at the highest point here, that's where, or the lowest point actually, um, those two points will be where it'll have maximum potential energy. So if the energy is conserved from this point as it's oscillating up and down, the place where it's going to have maximum kinetic energy is where it has the minimum potential energy. So at this uh, equilibrium position is where it'll have the maximum kinetic energy. At the same time, while having zero uh, potential energy. So with all of that in the background, you can set that this uh, maximum potential energy is also going to be your maximum kinetic energy. Oh, so I guess I can plug in the numbers and get the answer to part B. Um, I'll do that eventually. <laughs> and that maximum kinetic energy is associated with the uh, maximum speed by the expression for kinetic energy, one half m for a max squared. So to get an answer to part A, you solve this for V max. When you do that, this is what you get. V max is equal to the one half cancel. I have um, square root of K over M times square root of A squared or A. So I think I have all the numbers. K and M are, so let me plug in all these numbers in the basic SI unit. So A should be 0 0.03 meters. Um, let's plug in the numbers. So K of 1.5 divided by mass of 0 0.01 kilogram. Take the square root of that times the amplitude of 0 0.03 meters. So I get the answer of 0 0.367 meters per second. And uh, I'll plug it in and uh, momentarily check. 
And uh, well, before I do that, let me get the maximum kinetic energy too. And actually, uh, getting the way I'm approaching here, uh, getting the answer for maximum kinetic energy, it's a quicker step <laughs> because I didn't have to solve for Vmax or anything. I can just plug in uh, 0.5 or one half times spring constant, 1.5 times the amplitude, 0 0.03 squared. So, um, Oh, I, the question takes care of some of these uh, power of 10, 10 to minus four. So I'm going to look at, all right, this is 10 to minus zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So the leading term there should be 6.75. Okay, let's plug that in, uh, verify that's the right answer. And then uh, I'll show you one other way you can do this question. And I think that's how it might have been written originally based on the order of A and B. Okay, so 0 0.367, 0 0.367, that's correct. And the other one was 6.75. So the way this could also be done, um, it uses, I believe, uh, what's covered in question four, no. Uh, it's covered in one of the other questions. You can use the mathematical description of oscillation. And this is what I mean. Um, when you have, when you have a mass on a spring, uh, like what I have drawn on the diagram that I'm not going to erase, um, there's a kind of a differential equation that describes describes how the thing moves. So, um, so when you look at this setup here, um, you can almost imagine um, drawing free body diagram with a spring force. The way I've drawn, um, you kind of have to think about the effective spring force, which is the sum of uh, gravitational potential, gravitational force and spring force. But you can imagine um, there being some, so if I pull, imagine pulling it downward, then there should be an upward force. And you would, uh, through Hooke's law, you would associate with the uh, um, minus of K times the displacement. If I pull it down and the force is upward, that's what the minus sign is there for. And um, I'm just quickly going through the whole um, derivation of equation of motion. Uh, for, through Newton's second law, you know that the force is equal to mass times acceleration. And from kinematics, you know that acceleration is double time derivative of position. So you have mass times the double time derivative of position and when you take this and imagine solving for the highest order uh, differential term, then this is what you get. Uh, second time derivative of position, or second order, oops, forgot that, is equal to minus um, move m over k over m x. x here is a function of time. And um, that's why you can take the derivatives and, and not get zero. And uh, this is what we call equation of motion. It's a differential equation that fully describes the state of the thing you're looking at. And um, I think I have a lecture video where I go through the whole guessing a solution to it and getting a solution. Let me kind of skip that to this. One general form of the solution to this um, differential equation is to say the x position, it uh, becomes something sinusoidal, something that oscillates. And you can parameterize it with the uh, amplitude, that's sort of why I chose A before, times one of the two trig functions. I like cosine, so let me use cosine. And angular frequency of oscillation times T and for this to be completely general, you need a phase factor here that I also lecture about that you can watch. <laughs> so let me make it a vector with this unit vector here. So this is a solution to this differential equation. This is the 
mathematical representation of oscillation. Now, uh, from here, you can kind of quickly match what the maximum displacement is with uh, the parameters here. This A you see here, that is the maximum displacement because the cosine only goes from uh, plus one to minus one. So whatever this A is, is whatever the uh, farthest X is going to be away from zero. So, um, so that's why, why I associated, oops, uh, that's why I associated A with the, the maximum displacement they gave in the problem before. Now, the question asks for maximum velocity, and you can do it through conservation of energy as I did before, or having this um, much more powerful tool of knowing all the position at all times of this oscillator, you can uh, use calculus. In calculus, you learn that velocity is time derivative of position. I have a position as a function of time, so you can take a derivative to see what you get. When I take the derivative, this is what I get. I need to use a chain rule, so you know, derivative of the outside. So I get minus a sine of, um, well, and then if you're using chain rule, then you have to take the derivative of the inside uh, with respect to t, so I get a uh, factor of omega. So I get times omega. So this is what you get out of the chain rule. And let me just rearrange this a little bit. Minus say omega sine of omega t plus phi. Then uh, after staring at this for a little bit, what I hope you will realize is that this a times omega gives you the maximum speed. And uh, if you go back to what I did before, you will recognize when you plug in the formula that omega is equal to square root of k over m, then um, this uh, does give you the Vmax that I derived earlier as amplitude times the square root of k over m. So, um, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the second way you can do it. Once you get Vmax, then kinetic energy, you get it the same way through the expression of kinetic energy. So, so yeah, that's a question five. Um, so, I, yeah, so um, I guess, uh, especially this semester being what kind of semester it is with all the emergencies. Um, if you want to get through oscillations in a kind of very surface kind of way, you can, and in fact, some of the aspects of oscillation will help you do that in the sense that you can, as I did with the first method of solving this, you can kind of do it without learning anything new. <laughs> um, you can also learn something new, like this is something that's only covered in chapter 15, but uh, a lot of questions in chapter 15, um, that's kind of not required. It's something there that you can do that you don't have to. <laughs> 